So it's it's a uh, and this is a this is the what the sales guy wanted me to import into our CRM system. Would it be Salesforce or Dynamics? Doesn't really matter in this case. But there's a a a, 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 a a field that's required, first name and last name are required to actually input into Salesforce or Dynamics. So I can't just take these. Now typically what you would do is, I mean, think about what, how you would solve this problem right now. Your sales guy sends this to you. He says, there's obviously a pattern here. Can you just create a first name and a last name column so I can import this into our, into our sales system? Well, uh, you would probably think about how you would do this. You may have to do, uh, import it in the SQL Server, do some in, some in string functions. Maybe we do is you import it uh, using SIS and do it all in a script transform. Uh, maybe you decide to do an Excel function of some sort. But watch how easy this is now. So over here, I'm going to create a new column called first name. I'll type in Nancy. And then I'll go down and I'll say, Andrew, type in an A. It recognizes the pattern and hit enter. It's that easy. So Flash Fill recognizes the pattern. So I'll do, so if I do fourth coffee, for example, I'll put a capital F there as well. I'll hit enter, type in uh, North Wind Traders, bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So essentially, we're able to find a pattern of data and replicate that pattern over and over again inside of this. It even recognizes obscure patterns like dates and, and currency fields and those kind of things as well. So I could type in like uh, uh, something like, you know, Yo Nancy, how's it at fourth coffee? Am I spelling that right? I am. And when I hit uh, enter, replicate that down. It, you see, it's, it found a, kind of found some interesting. It found, it found a pattern that it really didn't find here. But overall, it did a pretty darn good job. This is called flash fill. There's nothing to really do. Uh, I mean, you could, if you, I I, I I'd say enter to make it happen, but you could hit control, uh, control enter, control E. You can also it's a hot key you can do to do it as well. But really, really cool feature inside of Excel 2013. Now, from a data cleansing perspective, it can be used to kind of help you uh, pre-cleanse some data from sales before you use SIS to load it. Now, in this spreadsheet, we're seeing a so classic table inside of Excel. Oh, by the way, for, for this fill feature, you do have to have an Excel, uh, an Excel table of some sort. So it does require there to be an Excel table, which can be accessed by formatting the table right here. Okay. Now, the other feature is this is a whole slew of things here. So if I were to select uh, these two quarters of data, for example. What we're going to see is this quick analysis button that opens up. And when I click on that, it's going to allow me to do a number of things, like data bars, for example, color bars, all these kind of things I can kind of look at before I actually commit to memory. Now, in my case, I want to do some totals of data. So in my case, I want to see if I were to lose the tech business at A. Dalton, how big of a, of a, of a blow is that going to be? Let me actually go back there. So I went to totals, and I'm going to slide to the right a little more here, and I want to get a percentage of the total. What we're seeing here is if I lose this, this top customer, it represents 5.8% of my business overall. So it's a really easy way to kind of visualize that. Again, I can also say, well, let's put a spark line on this. We can see, uh, see how it looks. See how easy that is? So we can see quarter over quarter, we're actually growing in our dependency of this one customer, not going down in our dependency. As we also alter columns, like change this to 32,000, if I hit enter, you'll see it animates everything that actually touched right there. So I'm going to undo that. You'll see it kind of animates it back. It's a really easy way to kind of uh, see how your, how your, what, what your data touches, actually. Okay. It also has the ability to, when you highlight a cell, you can go over to insert a recommended chart here, and it's going to tell you what chart it actually recommends based on the data you have selected. Now, this is actually what the chart's going to look like here if I were to hit OK. So if I were to pick this, uh, this nice uh, pie chart, which salespeople love, um, you can see it, it, it quarter one over two, how we're doing in sales here. Probably a line chart would make more sense in this case. But you're able to see easily what to do. Now, we can also change the look and feel of it by hitting this little pencil icon. And as you scroll down, uh, ask yourself here, what chart makes the most sense to you? OK. So hopefully you're looking towards this mono, monotone kind of look, it's kind of boring looking chart here. And it is boring, yes. But it would work beautifully on a black and white printer or for the color blind people. So this is probably the one you'd want to target. Again, you could change them all just by hovering over it and kind of get a look and feel of it before you commit. But colors, even though they look nice on, on a nice monitor, does not really look really well on a black and white printer. So it should be avoided if at all possible. 
All right, so those are a few little potpourri of things that they've turned on now inside of Excel. Uh, let me close out of this real quick. Oh, by the way, also, one of the neat things they have is the ability inside of here, if I'm inside this Excel area here, you'll see under Insert, a whole bunch of new apps that are available to you as an Office user. Now, some of these apps will integrate your data with LinkedIn, with stock charts. They have apps that actually give you a, a, a screen graph like this with really a really cool way of visualizing the data. You get amazing like a LinkedIn kind of ties, uh, Outlook ties, uh, Twitter ties, lots of good stuff like that if you're trying to get very non-conventional data inside that. All right, let's go back to our slides again, and when we come back, there we go. Whoops, that is not what I wanted. There we go. I apologize. Let me just go ahead and go back to the current slide, and there we go. All right, so in that demo, I showed you kind of a potpourri of, project, of things you can do. Now, the next feature, which I think is just freaking amazing, is this GeoFlow feature. The GeoFlow feature will help you analyze uh, GIS data or any kind of data where you have geography kind of uh, analysis you want to do on it. So if you have city, state data, international data, and even have lat long data, uh, it can map that beautifully for you. Let me show you what this looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and this Excel spreadsheet is part of the sample data set you can get with GeoFlow. Now, GeoFlow is a plugin for Excel. It can be downloaded for free on the Microsoft website today. Uh, so it's a really, really cool way of visualizing data. So I'm opening up uh, this, this data that shows all the different U.S. power plants over the years. So you're seeing the, here the date that actually the power plant came online. There's an Excel table here. What type of power plant it was, conventional, you know, natural gas, uh, solar, whatever. We can see who the company was, the, the state, and the county of the power plant, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and there's just there's there's thousands and thousands of rows. Now, my normal demo for this, I have about uh, 600,000 rows, and it sh it's able to visualize that in less than four or five seconds. 